Now, this is Fort Knox, and I am here with Q-Tip from many things, including A Tribe Called Quest, where many of us first got to know you. Thanks for sitting down for Fort Knox. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I want to dig right into what you're doing right now. Um, Elton John mm. did a song mm. that you uh, worked on a tribute related to with, with Demi Lovato. Yes. Tell me how that came about. Um, a lot of people might not know you pull from a lot of different uh, pieces, genres, yeah. pieces, mm -hmm. artists, inspiration. How, how did the well, Elton the Elton, the Elton thing happened. Um, I was work, we was working on the uh, last Tribe album. It's all wall sound. Yeah, so um, I, you know, was working with Jack White, and um, he had this song, and um, I was like, man, we should get Elton, and we reached out, played it for him. Um, he dug it, flew out to London, and uh, cut it, and um, he was just extremely gracious and like just open and just it was just a great experience and um when uh the the the, the time came for him to do his uh his legacy piece where he had all these different artists cover you know he he reached out and uh gave me kind of the pick of the litter so many great songs that he's done um to choose from to redo and um, I was like man maybe don't go breaking my heart because it was like um, at that time it was like crossing into disco but it was still a great song it had some soul um, in it had a soul to, yeah, yeah so I was just like let me just take it and flip it and you know we cut it we you know reached out to the great Demi Lovato who's amazing and um, we knocked it out it it's kind of like that. What yeah. is it about Elton John? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you remember when, you know, the first Elton John song that you heard, but there's something not only in his, his lyrics and his storytelling, but in the way he uses different sounds mm -hmm. that I think is, is unique. Mm -hmm. um, he's got so many, well, Candle in the Wind, Rocket Man, mm -hmm. Don't Go Breaking mm -hmm. My Heart. Mm -hmm. It's a really wide, use yeah. of a musical palette. Well, he's, you know, he's, from, from what I gather, you know, he's kind of rooted in, uh, you know, blues, uh, country, soul, you know, he's really on more of like a blues man kind of piano playing edge rather than like a kind of modern rock thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's his kind of, his rearing, I, I, I think. Um, and, you know, obviously having the facility as a musician, um, you know, he and Bernie were able to kind of like pin some of the, the greatest songs of the last century into this one. And, you know, they had a connection. Um, they had a, a real partnership creatively. And they wrote it to, to the wheels fall off. <laughs> and it was just, it's just so, like you said, it's just such a diaspora. Um, of, of different idioms that he melds into what's uniquely him, you know? And he can still do it. Still going. A couple the years ago, I saw him in yeah. Vegas, and he was at that piano, yeah. belting it out. Yeah. You, you I think that's know. what keeps him going, is just <laughs> his joy and his love for what he does. You know, he's on the roll right now, probably doing like 300 shows right now, so... It's one of those, he's one of those people that is definitely an inspiration. Speaking of those unique musicians in our time, um, Prince would have been 60 years old today. Mm -hmm. um, you and I were both coming up in New York mm -hmm. in, throughout the 80s. Yeah. And for me, as a, as a young kid, 1984, Purple Rain was one of those moments unique because it was bringing together this album and this look that Prince had and this movie all at the same time. It was such a creative convergence. I wonder what did Prince mean to you as a developing mm -hmm. creative mm -hmm. person who hadn't really launched your, your career oh, major, yet? Oh, major, major, one of my major influences. You know, I have a few and he's definitely um, in there. 
What like is it about? Definitely, like since his first album, um, he's just. Um, I feel like, especially in today's world, the word genius gets used carelessly, but it's appropriate in his case. You know, you're talking about a a, a prodigy who at 18 recorded his whole album and self-produced it, which was kind of unheard of for like 1970, 79. And he's somebody that I've always like admired, studied, dealt it. Like he's just so much a part of what I do even still to this day. So, and then, you know, as I've, you know, went into my career, having the opportunity to have worked with him and knew him like intimately, like that was my boy. Mm. Like he was like my big brother. And we would have just hours and hours and hours of conversation about music, life, everything that you could imagine. And then to be able to be, share the stage with him and to work in the studio with him, it's just like, <laughs> You see, I'm pinching myself. I, yeah. I still, <laughs> you know what I mean? I hear so people tell people clearly, to study music. Like, not just, don't just play it, and, but go deep and understand yeah. why different types of rhythm and different chords and scales work. Yeah, we, I mean, we, 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 we didn't really have that, because I'm not trying to, like, toot my horn or his or whatever, but we kind of connected like that mm -hmm. creatively and musically. So... We passed that initial, I guess, barrier of musical language and all of that stuff. And we we became friends, you know what I'm saying? That was mm -hmm. my big brother. Like, he would, like, tell me other stuff. And, you know, he was, like, one of the first guys, like, on the Internet. Um, and I remember him, like, telling me all about it and setting up his sites and stuff like that and just mm -hmm. watching it. And, you know, it was just really a great... Um, um, you know, he's one. He's one of my mentors, you know, and I miss him dearly. It's um, you know, it's uh, it still doesn't, you know, that whole year, twenty sixteen of the loss, you know, because right prior to that, I lost Fife, hmm. and um, I think he reached out, but I didn't get to speak to him because I was just in the middle of all the bereavement and all of that stuff. But then right. a few weeks later, he was gone. It was just like, wow, you know, it was just um, a heavy blow. But his contribution is is timeless. You know, when uh, when the, uh, the archeologists come to go through the rubble and they look for, you know, what was this culture, they're gonna look to the art first, and I'm sure they'll find, you know, his follicle. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you understand this better than I do, mm -hmm. but he had a kind of ambivalent relationship with things like streaming services mm -hmm. and his actual music on the internet. Mm -hmm. Did you go through that? Well, do you, you know, still go it through gets, that? It gets crazy, you know, because. Um, uh, there's there's um, energy and forces out here that um, that tend to when you have uh, when you get blessed with with, with an idea right mm -hmm. um, and you get blessed with the fortitude and the moxie to be able to kind of go through it and see it out and you do it more than one time, especially in a creative sense. And then you start to see that like, whether it be, it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, music. It could be, you know, in tech. It could be uh, in politics. It could be whatever it is, is your, is your acumen. If you get this thing that's kind of really unique and you start to step into truth, and step in the light, you know, the obvious thing is the thing that's anti it, right? Mm. Um, and then, you know, we exist in a paradigm here where, you know, it's capitalism, we have to capitalize. 
Right. So then when we enter into these contracts, into these deals, you know, everybody is, I, I think, trying to uh, look out for their best interests, but it seems that the controlling factor goes beyond looking for their best interests. It, it starts they want to become control even control. more. Control. Yeah. Um, Which for a creative person. Yeah, right? You see that, right? It sucks all the oxygen. Yeah. Out. And if you don't have, if you don't have faith, um, and I'm not just talking about a faith in your, in your talent or a faith in what, you know, you were gifted, but a faith in where that comes from, mm -hmm. you know, um, it could be, it could be rough because you're always going to be dealing with challenges. And a faith, are you saying because, so especially his young artists might about, think yeah, that they need the label, that they well, need those power structures. Well, yeah, and well, and the ambivalence about that, um, that he had for, you know, streaming services and putting things online and stuff like that. Um, it, 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 it's, it's many fold. And I think um, because this is kind of the fashion in the parlance the day where we stream now, you don't go out and buy a collection of, of songs, speaking specifically to music. Mm -hmm. It's been um, chopped up. I think that the music industry, um, you know, has mis missed a step or two, but one of the major steps that I think that they missed in the latter part of the last century, which they're still kind of like licking their wounds from, is not embracing uh, the internet um, and how the internet can, you know, be another conduit for them to put out product. They kind of, where the music industry was still a little bit fat off of the CD explosion because it's all about um, how many different ways can we present this in a hardware, right? Mm -hmm. um, so initially, yeah, kinda, well, it was a cause. Oh, I mean, okay, so I'm not gonna go <laughs> too far back, but you know, it's, it's vinyl. Uh -huh. Then when they figured out they could put the same thing out with no cost, but just on a different medium, which is cassette, they reintroduced that. They have these talks with, you know, different. Uh, uh, you know, audio companies and car companies on how they can change their formats that now can assist this. It gets a wider reach, which is great for the audi audience and great for the artist because now it's dispersed on another medium. Now here comes the CD. And when everything was reissued on CD in the 90s or the, the 80s, rather, mm -hmm. the music business saw a crazy surge because their catalog just got bought again, mm -hmm. like by all of the consumers. So then when the internet came along, you know, I think a lot of the gatekeepers were like, eh, get away from here, kid, <laughs> or Sean, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And um, it, it was something that they, they didn't see, they didn't have the vision to see um, that far ahead. It was kind of like a new thing for, you know, um, a lot of us on that end, you know, in the business. So they didn't really have people in there that could see the explosion. So now um, the music business has to kind of re reapproach it, um, reapproach their contracts, reapproach how they deal with artists. Um, they 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 cut off different arms of their companies, like artist development arms. Mm. And, and things of that nature to save costs. And now they're really, it's, now it's really about, um, you know, analytics and numbers and metrics to try to like gauge what's what so that they can jump in. Am I making sense? No, I that makes I'm sense. I was just with Troy Carter uh -huh. um, about a week ago. Yeah. He's working with Spotify yeah. some Troy's on. Troy's great. I guess trying to build that mm -hmm. artist development sense up for the new era, and right. so much of it seems to be missing in the industry. And I wonder, I mean, have you kind of made some degree of your peace with that? Because when I, 
when I listen to abstract radio, mm -hmm. right, on Apple Music, mm -hmm. it's a huge canvas at the same time. It used to be there were more gatekeepers in between you getting your ideas as a producer, as an artist, right. out to the masses. Right. Like I remember reading uh, an interview with Jay Dilla, who's a okay. pro protege of yours, about mm -hmm. you know waiting for the label to, to release his stuff. Right. And maybe it was too edgy for right. him. Now in this day now and age, you, to, you can mm -hmm. break stuff on abstract radio. You don't, mm -hmm. you don't have those same radio gatekeepers right. that you used to have. Right. Or if you're a super creative producer out in Detroit, you can put your stuff out there yes. and, and get discovered and build your own audience. Mm -hmm. Is so, that on balance good? That's or? good. It's, it, it, it's actually the thing, which is why we all have this, this debate and this, these, these talks about it, because it's, you know, you see how it works and then you see, you know, how it doesn't, but that's with anything, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But the, the, the great thing for artists, just pro artists about, you know, putting your music out is like you said, you don't have to wait around. You could get it going on your own, you know, and, you know, it's really liberating to do that. Hmm. But then the other problem on the other side of that is that because of that availability and because of that instant access to be able to professionally gather your ideas and launch it out yourself is that because of the ease you know now a lot of people feel like that they can do it too kind of mm -hmm. and that's a problem because for the actual work you know like I didn't just wake up and just you know do I had to still work you it, it's work you have to put the time in you have to put the hours in you have to put the days in and you can't cut corners because if you do you know all of that easy access to be able to make stuff and push a button and put it out and you may catch a lick initially but because of the lack of work and substance that's there it's going mm -hmm. to be short-lived yeah so i would encourage everybody um, that because, yes, you, there is an ease and a, and, a, and a quicker track to getting your um, thoughts and ideas out there, you still can't, you can't duck the responsibility that you need to have to your craft, mm. you know. Yeah, some so, stuff. Yeah. Some so that, old and, stuff and that's you go why back to and it a lot of stuff old, today, yeah. And, and then, some and stuff you go back to and it still sounds fresh. Yeah. And yeah. then just, you know, you, you have this whole conversation today um, about like, oh, music is this, is that. It's, you know, I, I tend to see a lot of great things, but I also see some things of, like I said, where, you know, people don't, some people don't want to put that time and that work in. You know what I'm saying? They just want to get to that end result, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know. So I see that. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's just an interesting uh, uh, equation. I want to talk the making of tip a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm about to go to my 20th college reunion yeah. tomorrow, as a matter oh, of okay. fact. Right. I went to school in rural Indiana, Greencastle, Indiana. I'm oh, a kid right. from New York, Washington, right. D.C. But How'd I was you wind like, up there? Well, they had a good media program, and okay. I was into like diversity and understanding different points of view. So okay. I said, why, why shouldn't I go to school in the rural Midwest? Right. I never spent any time there. Let me go out there and see what it's about. Okay. It was rough for a while, and I found, I, I ended up writing about 50 songs throughout okay. college. And for me, the music was like alchemy. It's like you can turn pain into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it was my way of working through a lot of things because mm -hmm. it, it could be the, the lyrics, the, the tune, whatever came out of pain. And then when I played it, I could sort of work it out. Right. You've talked about how in ninth grade right. you dealt with the passing of your father mm -hmm. and got into music at the same, same time. Thing. Yeah. Is that part of how you work through some of the things that Absolutely. life throws at you? It's cathartic. It's definitely... Uh, a refuge and that's one of the the the, the things that unify um, all of us underneath the auspices of art right mm -hmm. whether it be music or 
literature or film or what have you, you know, these things, you know, are able to in potentially encapsulate where you are in your life, good, bad, or otherwise. Um, these things are able to encapsulate how you feel about yourself or about the world or about others in a specific, in, in specific way. And these things are able to in, encapsulate uh, your queries or your pains or your questions or your sadness. And they're also able to like help build you and make you and inspire you to go forward. So for me, uh, you know, watching my father basically pass for over a year in front of me and then in passing when I was 16, you know, the music was just always a, 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 a safe haven for me, you know. Um, it was a, a place where I got to express myself, you know. Yeah. And all of that. So it was definitely a, uh, a refuge. Where do you find it now? I mean, I know there are still places mm -hmm. that sell vinyl. Um, it, it seems like there are a lot of different places where you can get inspiration, ideas. I know you, you took a, a year at one point and really did a retreat and read a lot and did mm -hmm. poetry. Mm -hmm. Where do you find the pieces, the inspiration, the music these days mm -hmm. that ends up informing you about sound and and helping to birth new ideas? Well, all around, you know, I, 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 like everybody else, I listen online. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I buy it, I, I go out, I, I try to move around, I try to like, like um, keep myself um, in places of, Inspiration of light, of 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 you know godliness. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. um, I just try to like strive. You know, and I'm far from perfect in in my findings, but I still try to like seek out those things that keep me um, informed and inspired. You know, through those different ways. You know. Is touring cathartic or was it hard? I, I remember seeing you and Jerobi on stage um, after this last right. album. Right. And I remember, I think it was SNL, when the banner came down okay. with Fife on it. Yeah. And I mean, it just it looked like it was hard to have his voice booming, but him not there. Yeah. And then for you to have to go through multiple nights of that. I it was very trying. Um, but it was also cathartic too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was still, we were still working it out, you know? I'm sure some of the people who were watching or listening were still kind of working out that loss for them, but just loss in general. Mm. Um, but for me, personally, it was something, and then, you know, after that we did a few shows, but I just couldn't, I couldn't move without him there. You know, it was definitely um, a lot, but I, I'm I'm happy that I accepted that challenge and went through it, went through it, and experienced that. And I'm able to call it out and notate what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Um, I think that that was that was instrumental for my continued growth. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was tough. Yeah. When you hear the voice and you, you're on stage and it's something that not only did we build it, but I knew him since we were four years old, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to lose your friend, it's not many people that you, you grow up with since four that you still stay in contact with through your latter years and on top of it, create something with that person and make something with that person. And on top of that, make something that people seem to, to dig, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, all of those things, you know, sit there. Why do you think that is? I mean, there's a certain demographic, probably between age 35 and 50. 
I fall in there. Mm. Where, I mean, yeah, we listen to a lot of music, mm. but tribe, the native tongues movement, I'm sure you hear it all the time, how, man, that meant something to me, mm. you know, personally. It was like a, just a representation thing, even within black culture, mm -hmm. there was an acknowledgement that um, we were more than one dimensional. Right. I mean, yes. Queen Latifah and Moni yes. Love brought that, yes. you know, yes. with UNITY. Yes. Some, I mean, th those lyrics and those issues yes. just yeah. as relevant today as they were back then. What, what do you think it was about the native tongues, what you guys were about, that meant so much to a generation? I think that um, at the time, you know, we were just blessed to be able to be at the, the right time at the right place, that's part of it. Um, but also, you know, prior, I guess, to us, um, you were starting to see different shades of black complexity um, through this music. Mm -hmm. On this initial, you know, implosion from the, you know, early 70s up into like the 80s, it was kind of like a, you know, a smaller dimension. But like most things that, you know, that grow, um, it started to widen. And then um, through that, it was able to carve out paths for other people to enter us. And then, you know, at that time, we were able to express that we're more than one dimension, that we, we don't just do X. <laughs> we do A and D and H and J and, you know, and just like everybody and... else. Just <laughs> yeah, like right. everybody else. Yeah. So because we were kind of like first to kind of, of the first to kind of like, you know, uh, have that kind of position ab about, you know, showing our complexity and showing our levels and showing our depth. I think that that's probably why there's still, you see J. Cole and you see Kendrick and there's still, it's still, it's out, you know, it's outgrowths of that, it's outspurts of that, you know. And I Kanye. Yeah, and Kanye. Also somebody who Kanye looks well. up to you. Yeah, a guy and, called Wes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, he took that from a tribe called Quest yeah. and and, yeah. and flipped it, yeah. kind of like you're doing with Elton, yeah. paying tribute to you. Um, I the the biggest cultural moment from my childhood that I remember with hip hop was right. EPMD, oh. Roxanne, Roxanne. Right. No, UTFO. Sorry. Okay. I get the uh, four okay. letters. Okay. UTFO. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, because you, you had Roxanne, Roxanne. You said EPMD. I'm like, oh, no, you going there? Yeah, EPMD yeah, yeah. too. But, no, but the I cultural moment was UTFO, Roxanne, Roxanne. Because okay. I remember that would come on the radio one week. And then you had like a the response. Answer. Yeah. You had Roxanne Chante. Yeah. You know, you had this feminist response to it. You had Roxanne's grandmother. You had <laughs> it was like every week right. there was another right. twist on right. this right. showing the diversity of viewpoints and kind of like this conversation yeah. emerging the on the radio. Mm -hmm. Do we have that anymore? Should we? Um, do we still have the diversity of voices in any musical genre that are doing that kind of almost jazz-like call and response and riff on each You other. do, but going back to uh, the whole record company paradigm, um, it's probably harder for you to find. You have to mm -hmm. really seek it out. You, don't, you almost have to go down a labyrinth on YouTube or something <laughs> if, you, if you put up you know, Roxanne, Roxanne on YouTube, and then Roxanne's Revenge, and Roxanne Shantae, and Roxanne, <laughs> you know, when you look to the videos on the right, you see, you know, other suggested use of things that are similar, and then it takes you down a path, and then maybe you'll find somebody in 2018 who's from Piscataway, or <laughs> whatever, that's, you know, looking at things from different perspectives, there's people who are kind of having those kind of conversations musically. But, you know, record companies, 
aren't um, going to pay attention to that unless for it, it it's already starting to grow and there's already an audience and there's already like all these gazillion followers because they don't have time to get into the development stages to help bring those things out and really shine a huge light on them. Mm. Um, so they'll wait and see if that conversation of the cat from Piscataway <laughs> grows over a period of time. And once they do, then they'll jump in and then we'll see it. So our, to answer your question, is that still happening? Yes, but I feel like it's cloaked. You right. really have to kind of find it. You've embraced this role, it seems to me, as a sort of historian, archeologist, philosopher in hip hop and beyond. You're getting ready to teach this course at NYU mm. on the link between jazz and hip hop. Right. You're also an uh, artistic director, creative director, for, forgive me for mangling the title, at no. Kennedy Center. I mangle it for, all the time, <laughs> by the way. I'm like, what is it? <laughs> and you pulled together, you're not trying to do it by yourself, you pulled together a bunch of thinkers. Right. Questlove, Black Thought, you know, mm. from the roots, um, journalists who have been following hip hop for just lots of people. Tell me about this. I think once I heard you talk about different periods for artists. Mm -hmm. This period for Tip. What is this period of professorial? I I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle of it, bro. So I I I'm just following it. Like um, you know, I mean. It, and it's kind of a natural thing, you know, I guess when you get into el elder statesmanship, you know, you start So you've embraced that, huh? Do I embrace it? Yeah. You're at elder statesman now? Is that... I, I, I guess. Am I? I <laughs> don't know. In our 40s? I mean, when you start teaching, I don't know. You know, these <laughs> terms are... are I, I'm trying to um, say these things to help everybody understand, I guess. But I don't really put too much weight on the titles I just can't much, believe we're that you know old what I'm now. You know, I'm, I don't feel like talk I, and about, I don't feel like our, we're yeah, old. I don't think I so. I feel either. like we're light. We're living. You know what I mean? It's all, every moment is an opportunity for you to gain wisdom. And the more you have, you know, you, it, it, that's the thing that differentiates one who has the wisdom versus the younger one who doesn't, and there's that word younger, it's just time. Hmm. The more time you have, the, the more things you, you have potential access to that you add on. I think those are the things that are monikers of um, time and growth. I don't say old or age. I mean, obviously, physically is one thing that we can't really rewind, but, you know, we still have the, the spirit, the energy from the creator, like we still have that source. So as I move into that, that phase, I don't know what it is. I, I, still, I don't feel like I've peaked yet musically. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I've peaked yet. I, I'm, I still have ideas and thoughts. I don't feel like I've peaked yet as a, uh, uh, I don't know. You one of those iceberg guys where 90% of the songs and beats that you created are still below the surface. We haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> Which is probably why Prince is my boy, right? That's because right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has like I have a lot, I have a lot of stuff, but I'm but I'm tr striving to like put it all out, you know. Hmm. But um, there's other things that happen in life that you have to kind of tend to as well and take care of and set up. But I'm confident that all of that stuff will see a light of day, and then I could continue to. To do that, but um, tell me about abstract radio as part of it. Yeah, because I mean, it's like two hours long. That's that's yeah, long. It's long, and it's yeah. rich and layered. That that's got to take a lot. Of yeah, time. But, well, time, right? Yeah, and I don't. You can't get time that time back. So <laughs> I try to make try to make it enjoyable and again palatable for everybody who could potentially be checking it out. You know, um, what does it do for you? Uh, it makes me happy. Um, I feel connected, energized, peace with it. You know, I have fun. Mm -hmm. um, it informs. 
How so? Um, because I get to do mixing, you know, I, I, I put myself where I, I, I have to listen to a whole bunch of new things, hmm. you know, um, and I really try to source out certain things and make certain musical connections uh, between something that could be present day that maybe people haven't looked at and something that could have been yesterday. It sounds like you, to, you do work that forces you to do a process. Yes, yes. Yes. Like the and work makes you do the pro makes you do the work the, yeah, that yeah. deepens you. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. important for a creative person. It Maybe that's very, a lesson. No matter what you're doing, take that away. Do work that makes you work. That, that makes, makes you, you work. That makes you not think about the fact that you're doing work. You mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? Do work that makes you not think about the fact that you're doing work. Hmm. Before we set off to do our work, you know, we could be uh, anxious or doubt or, you know, nervous or whatever. But the minute we drop into and we step because we have to do it. So when we drop into it and you get into it, it's almost like when you start running for all of you runners out there. Like after you hit a certain pace, mm. you know, your endorphins kick in and it gets bright and you could go a little bit further. You don't think about the fact at a point that, that you're running because you, you're working and it starts to feel good. It builds you. So when you do work that makes you not think that it's work and you drop in, you start to do it, it feeds you, it builds you. The work, um, it becomes, uh, you, it's, it's rote. Mm. It's, it's, me it's a meditation. Um, and then by the time it's done, it's like, wow, I did that? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But then you realize, then when you start having to do the, the dailies of life and you do whatever you do and you have to get up the next day, it still could be daunting. Oh, man, I got to do this, I got to do that. But the minute you drop in and you commit to it and do it, it's... It's, it's a joy, it's a blessing, it's a gift. Yeah. I love it. You gonna do more TV? Um, I'd like to. I know you're I'd talking like about that Native Tongues thing with mm -hmm. DiCaprio for a while. Yeah, 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 we were talking um, about doing that. And um, you know, he and I, we have some um, things that we're working on developing right now um, for film and TV. We've been working on some things for a while. Um, and um, would love to do that. Would love to do some acting again if we get to the opportunity to. Ah, uh, Miles uh, Davis. The Miles Davis thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's... What so, did you get from that? Um, a connection to another one of my heroes. Um, you know, it's funny because I wrote it as a short at the time um, Christine Vachon was was heading a company called Killer Films. And give people the name Atlanta of it Bart. so that I'm not just throwing out Miles Davis. It's called people my, like, oh. my Funny Valentine. But we're 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 currently um, we you know we're out there we're talking to some folks um, out there. But we haven't closed yet, but we're in the middle of talks. But mm -hmm. I st it started um, with Christine Vachon at Killer Films, so I have to give a shout out to because. Um, she was going to let me, uh, it was going to be a short, and I was going to be in it and direct it. And um, I just left a meeting with her. Um, and I was going to meet up with Nelson George, <coughs> who's okay. a writer, journalist, um, director. Yeah. Fantastic guy. So I had the script under my arm. I was going to meet him because he was going to write a bio. And I guess I put it down, and he saw like a script with Miles Davis. He said, "What's this?" And I said, "Oh, I wrote this. I just left Killer Films. I'm gonna do a short." And da da da. da. He was like, "Oh man, give it to me. Let me write it. I mean, we need to do a whole thing." And he took it and he wrote it. And you know, we're we're here with it. And um, I just got the again the, the I gained the connection to Miles. I gained the connection to my artists, to that world, and told a story. It was able to like, 
not be myself and portray this other thing. It's another side that I don't get to do much, but I enjoy. Mm. You, know? uh, you get to see a lot of different facets mm -hmm. of the creative process, the entertainment industry, just from the people you've met and gathered around you over the years. I heard somebody say once that music makes money for everything except music. Um, mm. You music know, you, makes you put, money for everything except music. You put music sells everything but music. You put it in a commercial and it sells the cars. Right. Okay. You know, you put mm -hmm. it in a TV show, it sells the scene. You know, movie soundtracks. You get all emotional when you hear the music. But these days, anyway, in mm -hmm. this period, music has a hard time creating a business yeah. model around itself. Right. Um, is it live shows where uh, artists these days need to look? To actually eat, <laughs> you know, to figure out how to. I mean, initially, yeah, you know, the road is one way, but you know, record companies, for a minute, were doing and probably still do do these things called 360 deals, where they now are trying to take your road money and your merch money. Mm. You know, so they're trying to, and again, would you say don't do those? Is, I would say don't do those, mm. but um, you know. They've they've made a compelling case for themselves because some of the the things that they offer, I guess, it depends if you want if you're in it for fame and popularity and all that stuff or whatever. But um, again, and I hate to sound like such a I'm not trying to like berate the music industry and smack them in the back of the hand, <laughs> but truth is truth. You know what I'm saying? And um, was it music industry rule you know, number 4,080? Like, hey, and <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that because they're still licking their wounds from their, you know, being remiss of not to be inclusive on the initial uh, phase of the internet, and they're trying to like monetize everything right now, they, they're in a space of desperation. Mm. And they're not but what they're failing to realize is that this is a creative business. It's a business, but you're in a business that deals with intellectual property, that deals with um, nuance, hue, tone, so many different variables that aren't um, concrete. Can't reduce it to data. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but yet and still they're trying to reduce it to, to data. And as long as they continue to do that, they're going to unfortunately find themselves to be kind of like always trying to catch up and then being in the last and then turning into something else. Like they, 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 they have to realize that um, you have to kind of be in partnership with artists. Hmm. Um, the music should be, a, the people who do the music should be able to make the money, not just Chevrolet or <laughs> McDonald's or whatever it is that uses these licenses, but the deals are so like, um, unbalanced that it's it's just it's just natural and just we see, we've seen cases of this for hundreds and hundreds of years yeah and it's it's funny because they're so in the middle of it that they don't even see it like this conversation if they hear it they probably would be like oh but <laughs> not even hear the 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 place that I'm coming from the place I'm coming from again is not to berate but it's hopefully to appeal to um, the human spirit still of the person who's in business and to truly understand what they're in business for and what they're doing so that, you know, the people who do the, the music can also benefit because it's enough for everybody. Yeah. It's enough for everybody. It's you know Jay-Z. You know Jay-Z. I know Jay-Z. Like personally. I know he's, <laughs> I know. you know, listen to Carter. your stuff pre-release mm -hmm. and you guys, you know, both New Yorkers came up that way. Mm -hmm. So he's got title. Mm-hmm. Questlove, who's also a friend of mm -hmm. yours, I know he's mm -hmm. got he's got a thing going on Pandora. Pandora. You're on Apple mm -hmm. Music. Mm -hmm. 
do the platforms matter? Are there differences? Mm. Um, how do you look at what makes a particular company or platform? You know, there's Amazon in the mix, there's Spotify. How are they going to show whether they're more righteous the than another? Or, or what's the differentiator between those companies? Yeah, I mean, for, for a consumer who cares about music and musicians and how healthy the business is going forward, how are we going to be able to tell whether one is better than the other for, for the artist, which well, to support? Well, I mean, I think the way you tell is through content. Um... And I guess, you know, innovation in, in, in marketing, in innovation in, you know, how they message, mm -hmm. and um, specificities in their marketing and how they message. But it's ultimately content. content like what are you telling content, Eddie Q content, and Jimmy Iovine about, content. here's where you need to get to... <clears throat> You know, Apple talks that they all talk about being good for artists, but where you really need to get to in order to reach some of those issues you were just talking about, about, you know, being... For them, really, it's about market share. It's about consumption. It's about having the most mm -hmm. to be the biggest because, you know, when, you, when you're a conglomerate in that way, you know, you kind of become, like, I don't know if you're into... Uh, into comics, I am. Mm -hmm. You become Galactus, yeah. And Galactus was the one who would Just swallow around, worlds, eating worlds. That's all he did was swallow worlds. Can somebody be Silver Surfer? And see, Silver <laughs> Surfer. And that's that's where you, and that's where I believe Jay Z is Silver Surfer, and Questlove is Silver Surfer, and I could be Silver Surfer. Mm. You know, you have to instead of. Uh, airing complaints and stuff like that, you have to you have to kind of see it from both sides. You mm. have to put yourself in their shoes, right? So I understand that in order for Galactus to survive, his practical need is to eat worlds. <laughs> in order for, for Norman Rad or Silver Surfer to save his world, he says, look, I love my dear world of peace so much. I have these, I'll do, I'll go out and get other ones, but leave this one alone. Mm. So I understand Norman Rad's position, and you're dealing with something that's just kind of a one dimensional you have to consume, because if they don't have market share, then they fall. Yeah. It's bottom line. There's thousands and thousands of people that work at these companies. People. So that have to sustain themselves in their lives. Right. You know? So we understand that. But then there's the 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 I the iconic insignia of the Apple or Pandora or this or whatever. And this big conglomerate is the Galactus and then, you know, hopefully we could be again the silver surface to bridge the gap. Because it could work. Mm. I'm an idealist, you know, I'm an I'm an optimist, although I'm also an agitator, and I'm also somebody who's a rebel. Mm. You know, I don't. I try not to mince words, even if it's against myself, because I believe that we all um, have things that we make and things that we miss. Right. But um, ultimately, it's it's trying to um, to bring about that bridge, you know, so that the music, the, I don't know if, you, if, if, if I'm losing you, but. No, no, I got you. Yeah, you know, so we got to like, we got to figure this out, you know. You don't, you have to have people who are truly creatives. You can't just, uh, just analyze and, you know, come up with some analytics and, 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 and make an equation to find nuance and to find mood and to find energy and to find harmony. You know, we make the computers, you know what I'm saying? Like, we are sensitive, we're um, complex, 
Um, and we have great potential, but we can't succumb to, um, you know, our uh, fears. You understand what I'm saying? I know, I know what you're okay. saying. I could talk to you all day, but I want to respect your time. So no, hopefully no, we'll all do all this good. again. Yeah. Um, I want to wrap up mm -hmm. with what are you excited about creatively right now? Whether mm -hmm. it's um, uh, a young producer who might have given you, you know, a file. I don't know mm -hmm. how they give you their stuff uh -huh. these days. Or something that you've seen or something that you've heard, something you're working mm -hmm. on with Kennedy Center. I don't know, anything. Tell mm -hmm. us what to look forward to. Um, well, I'm excited about Kennedy Center. Um, you know, uh, we're, we're getting ready to start putting together the rest of our council um, with, uh, with the good folks there. Shouts out to Simone and Kim. But I'm really excited about that. And um, I uh, am excited about this artist that I'm about to work with, this young lady from Houston. Her name is Megan hmm. the Stallion. What does she do? Ah, <laughs> we'll see. All right. But I'm excited about that. Um, uh, I'm excited about, you know, seeing how this country um, grows. I think that we're, it's pregnant with possibilities. There's a lot of um, 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 dissension. There's a lot of bad vibe I feel like that's going on in the world always has been but you know I'm excited about this the spirit of the good man mm. you know mm -hmm. and I think that good spirit um, should be served and brought out of, of, of all of us and the only way we do that is that we recognize and accept and our responsibility for the other sides of us so I'm excited to see that discourse happen as it's, it's, it's happening right now live. It's being televised, the revolution, <laughs> as Gil Scott said. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, that's about it. I'm excited to be making some more music and um, to putting some stuff out here. Well, that's a big part of the role of the artist, I know, is yeah. to uh, you not only hold up a mirror, but show us what we can be. So, yeah, hey, yeah. I appreciate you sitting down and having this conversation <laughs> with me. Thank you. More man. than you know. I, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for Warnox. <laughs>